out here doing some bee work and I saw this tree in bloom and I just knew that the ladies would be all over it. And they sure are. There are bumblebees, little bees I don't know the names of, sweet honeybees all over this tree. Oh my gosh. Spring feeding at its finest. Early spring feeding. Okay, we're doing a little beekeeping today. And I opened this hive. And apparently, the ladies did not like this hole because they prop it up. I don't know if they felt cold air was coming in on them or what was happening. And these are usually kind of a spicy little hive, but as you can see, they only prop it right there underneath that hole. All right, ladies, good job, good job. Well, had a little bit of a flat tire on the side of the road with a truck full of bee equipment. very nice white knight who had a jack and helped us flip the tire so good to go moving on heading to the next yard pick up a few more blocks uh, there's the smashy tire there's matt yay matt he changed the tire all right on to the next yard so this is our last yard of the night and of course, it's the one that had the fire ants. So that was really fun. This is also known as the Chigger Yard, affectionately, between Nathan and I. Since we have gotten chiggers in this yard many, many times. So bug spray is an essential in your bee bag. Although, I don't know if it kills fire ants. But, hey, no fire ant bites, no chigger bites this time of year. Moving on. Okay, what we're doing here is we have drone comb. That's why it's green. And I've melted a bunch of wax and water into a crock pot. And it would be nice if I could just dip and not have to use a cup. My crock pot isn't quite big enough. If you ever think about doing this in your kitchen, yeah, <laughs> you'll be cleaning wax up forever. <clears throat> so the reason that we do this, this is drone comb. So these little holes are bigger than worker brood cell. And so it encourages the bees to only put drone comb on these um, frames. And the reason that a lot of people use drone comb is they want to isolate the drone brood, which is where the varroa mites prefer, and then they can pull the whole frame out and freeze it and hopefully kill a huge uh, load of mites. We are going to use this because we're getting ready to start our queen mating and we're going to um, try to sort of make our own drones, saturate the area with our own drones so that we can have um, maybe a little control over our genetics, <laughs> maybe, but we're also gonna try an experiment. So let me get this set up and I'll show you. Oh, that looks lovely, doesn't it? Okay, so our little experiment is we're gonna dip one side and we're gonna heavy dip it. And then we're going to dip our other side and again heavy dip this. So this is wax sitting on top of lots of water. So when you put it through, it, the wax sticks to the thing. And we're going to leave the middle open and we're going to see how the bees distribute this wax 
when it's not all over the whole frame. Heavy dip both sides, both ends. Okay, and leave the middle unwaxed. You can see where the wax is. All right, and then we'll see how this works out. And we'll uh, check on it in a little while. Learning about hydroponics today. We are putting bees on a property to help these guys get their ag. This is Curtis. You don't have to Hi. walk away. <laughs> And he's showing me their hydroponic operation. Boy, this is so cool. We're in the greenhouse. Oh, awesome knowledge. So of all of the things that I've gotten for uh, being in the beekeeper and people have given us gifts, this is the coolest. I got some basil and I got some cilantro and they both have roots so I can plant them. Man, awesome. All right, so we're in our little grafting shed here. Um, and we've got Mike and an unnamed grafter who are <laughs> grafting eggs. And so they're using a Chinese grafting tool and they kind of get it wet. And then Mike is going in there with his flashlight and his glasses and he's scooping up like what a four day old larvae three three and joanna will tell me i mean the unnamed one will tell me <laughs> that it's way too big so they're they're when the um larva is just in a barely comma shape just barely a c right mm -hmm. yeah. And then we have some royal jelly. So they put a little royal jelly that they collected in the bottom of these cells. And then they drop an egg in there. And then, so they made a starter hive, which is full of a bunch of nurse bees and no queen. So they'll take these 90 eggs that they're grafting and they'll put them in these starter hives. And then the bees will create a bunch of queen cells and then you'll take them out once they're cells and put them in a finisher. Oh, sorry. I, That's okay. I was struggling. Um, you want to answer that one? We're going to take them out right after the cell starts to be built. So usually just a few days, maybe three to four days. Okay, and so before it's completely capped. Yes. And then it goes to a finisher? To a finisher or what some people call a cell builder. A cell builder. And so is the cell builder queenless as well as the starter? No. The cell builder is a big double deep uh -huh. with a queen on the bottom and excluder and your cells on the top. Okay. And because the queen can't get to them, they mm -hmm. won't, they won't, she won't and break it down. The cells have already been started, then those bees just continue to finish off those cells. Does it ever throw a hive into swarm mode? You know what? I believe that it does. Yeah. Only from experience. And the reason I ask that is because we know that when they're swarming, once those cells have started, they're in swarm mode and they won't uh, they won't get out of it. So, yeah. huh? Do you do anything to prevent that in your finisher hives? So I try to just rotate them, not use my finishers too too often in a row. Where uh -huh. I take that excluder off. Okay. So that they don't feel like that top is queenless. Okay. Gotcha. But a lot, a lot of times, my finishers end up swarming. Interesting. Could you put a queen excluder between the bottom and the bottom board to keep that from happening? I suppose so. Okay. I mean, that's what I do when I bring home a swarm sometimes. I just wonder if the bees would kill her, though. You know, sometimes I think that that I'm, happens, too. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I use it when I'm bringing home a swarm, but they have already technically swarmed. I'm trying to keep them from leaving. Yes. But being in swarm mode and not swarming is different than being caught. Right. How's your egg hunt? It's good. This is a nice frame. 
I'm enjoying these it. These are definitely better than the other ones that we yeah. scavenged. How many frames did you pull to do this? Four? Five. Five, and you'll do both sides? Um, well, we'll do whatever, if we can get enough. But some of them were just, it, you know, it's early in the season, so we're not looking at a full frame that's a three-day-old eggs. It's like this, where you have some emerging brood, and then right. we have some larva that's too old, and then on the outskirts, maybe we have the what we need that's three days old or so. Gotcha. So you're kind of having to sort of dig yeah, dig through to, this. We're having to do a lot of hunting here. Gotcha. And are you seeing drones in the hives now? Yes. Okay. In the big hives. In the big hives, yeah. I haven't seen any yet in any of the hives I've kind of looked at. Can I look at that for a second with sure. my Whoops. with my camera? Yeah. Does that help? Yeah, okay. So it's kind of hard to see. But they're in there, little things. Cool. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Awesome, Blossom. And we're doing this because we are doing this for our own queens. Right. Right. To requeen our own yeah, hives. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna use these to make splits out. Of. Right. And, um, and um, that's how we increase our numbers by splitting the hives that come back from California and the ones over here. And you're putting a wet towel on top of those eggs to keep yeah. them from drying out. Yeah. And when you pull them out, like you can't touch the side of these cells when you're pulling out an egg. You have to reach in there, scoop it, scoop underneath it. Don't turn it because they only breathe on one side. Yeah, and if you then... look right here, you can see where I blew one out. Where one's blown out. So oh, yeah. If, if, I, if I dig in I too hard, it. yeah, then I, I blow the side. Oh, there it is right there, yeah. yeah. And, and the, but, the, but the egg can't touch the sides either. No. So you got to scoop underneath it. Get some royal jelly. Don't flip the larva. Don't touch the sides. Get it to the cup. And so do you hold your breath while you do this? Uh, you make it sound complicated. <laughs> well, you, I you tried just, this last year. <laughs> you, you just reach in and you just scoop it up. Just and scoop it, it up. Oh, okay. And if, if you worry about all the other stuff, it's really hard. Is it like but my yeah. golf squeak, swing? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. But you're absolutely right about that. Okay. All but right. It, it becomes um, just a fluid motion. Uh huh. Oh, I forgot to put. When you have a really good frame, it's like it's fast. It oh, just it just you get in a rhythm. Whoop. Yeah, yeah. But when you have to fish around like this, there's a big glob of royal jelly and, and some kind. There of it is without the weird thing. Yay! Oh, I think there's a bee on me. Yes, get off my neck. Okay. This is not the one I want to get stung on. Okay. You know, I get stung in every video. Every every vlog that I do has a video of me getting stung. I've noticed that. Yeah. The last one didn't. I'm hoping this one doesn't. <laughs> so after my visit to the hydroponic farm, I was thinking about all the cool gifts that I've gotten as, as beekeeping and being out in the world and helping people. I have gotten eggs jam, jelly, meat chickens, dressed out, not live chickens. I have gotten four live goats that are still in my backyard. I have gotten one German Shepherd puppy. I have gotten the basil, the cilantro. I've gotten engraved hive tools. Oh, a multitude of bee gifts. A uh, bee mat that says, you know, welcome to my hive. Um, tons of bee related stuff. So beekeeping is not just, you know, personally rewarding and helping the environment and helping the bees, but um, you can get some cool stuff. And if you like goats, goats seem to be the uh, the thing I have gotten the most of. <laughs> so luckily goats and, and bees get along real well. <laughs> I hope y'all have an excellent spring, early spring here in Texas. And uh, I'll see y'all around.
until someone else is all done, okay? Hey, yo. I am getting ready to split a hive today. As you can see, it's jam-packed full of bees. Hang on, let me get my glove back on. What I wanted to show y'all was how white this new comb is. Because this is a really good sign for March. See how white it is? Oh, this is brand, brand, brand new stinking comb. And they're making so much more comb because they have run out of space and they have so much resources coming in. And I don't know if you can see in there how white it is, how full of bees it is. Oh my gosh, this hive so needed to be split. All right, if I cr come across any swarm cells, I will let y'all know. <laughs> Well, I wanted to show y'all those two hives that I split because they are the genetics of champions. I don't know that I've ever seen anything like that. The Both hives, one is a split off the other one from last year. So many bees, so much brood, so much early spring buildup. They already had supers full of food. Oh, no mites, I did a mite check, however, <laughs> As is often the case with all of these great hives, they are cranky. Um, so I'm hot. I don't know, it's 75 degrees today and they were stinging me through my le leather gloves. It wasn't the worst hive I've ever seen, but I was nef not gonna take off my gloves and um, start my camera. So I'm so sorry that you couldn't see what fantastic hives these are. I'm trying to talk um, the property owner into doing splits off all of these for all of his hives so that they could be just fantastic hives. However, that does mean it's hard to mow around them and may make life slightly, slightly annoying for him. So we'll see what he says. <laughs> anyway, um, on to the next yard. Maybe we can get some, some better pictures of some splits but there were no queen cells uh drones drone cells so i timed it just right uh, it's kind of early to be splitting made me a little nervous but i think we're good i think we're good i got um two splits off each box which is crazy so whew. well i guess i'm christening my new car in just fine because i have a car full of bees I just don't know how this always happens to me. But I can tell you that they're like little kids and they settle down once the car gets moving. And they never sting me. They never bother me while I'm driving. They just hang out. And of course, bees have mustard yellow poop, so I'm hoping they don't poop back there before I get home real quick and let them out. Oh, great way to start the morning.